Hi guys, welcome back to the Arter server. Have you watched my HPA comparison video from 2020? That video was made to explain all the different varieties of HPA SAS controllers available in my eBay store. Now, that video might have guided you to choose an LSI SAS 2008 based HPA controller if your storage setup consists only of spinning hard drives. So you've decided you want an LSI SAS 2008 HPA with horizontal ports and you've narrowed it down to the most common choices, which are the 9201-8i or 9211-8i and the Dell H310. But now you're stuck. How do you choose between the genuine LSI cards versus the Dell cards? Which one is better? I'm gonna help you answer that question in this video. Now, before we get into it, please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm so more people can benefit from this information. And if you're into building your own servers for true NAS, Unraid, or any other NAS, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my next video. All right, let's get into it. So here I have the LSI 9211-8i, which is mostly identical to the 9201-8i, except it has an extra NVRAM chip to support the RAID firmware. And over here, I have the Dell H310. Both of these are flashed to LSI IT mode, and both of these are based on the LSI SAS 2008 chipset. Both also have SFF87 SAS ports facing the horizontal uh, direction towards the front of the card. So from a functionality and performance standpoint, these are essentially identical. But of course, as you can see, they do have some differences. So let's talk about some of those differences. All right, first, the LSI controller has a lot more LED indicators than the Dell card. The LSI card has a heartbeat LED right over there, a power LED right there, two uh, SAS port activity LEDs, each uh, for each of the SFF 8087 ports here and here, and individual SAS lane activity LEDs on top over here. Also, there's a system error LED indicator back here. These LEDs can be helpful when you're having problems and can aid in your troubleshooting effort. And if you like to see blinky lights in your server because perhaps you're using a PC case with a window, then you might really appreciate all of these lights. On the other hand, the Dell H310 is very minimal in this regard and only has a single heartbeat LED located right there. All right, so second, the LSI controllers uh, have no SM bus signal and provides the broadest compatibility. The Dell H310, on the other hand, has Dell's custom uh, SM bus signal that works with Dell servers. The SM bus signal can sometimes cause a conflict with some motherboards that use the SM bus in their own way. This results in a system that won't post or perhaps disables some of the DIMM slots. I've talked about this problem and how you can work around it by covering the SM bus pins on the uh, PCI connector with some tape. If you need to do that, I'll link that video in the corner here for you. I find that the SM bus conflict happens most often with Gigabyte motherboards and HP computers, but the problem is not exclusive to those two brands. If you just really don't want to deal with this problem at all, then the LSI controller is your choice. All right, so third, over the course of handling over 30,000 SAS controllers, I find that the LSI controllers are just more fragile than the Dell ones. I've just seen a lot more damage LSI controllers than Dell ones, even though I sell a lot of Dell cards. I don't know exactly why that is, but if I had to speculate, the, car the Dell cards use larger SMD components, as you can see here. So compare that to the LSI ones. And as you can see, the LSI design uses really tiny SMD components. And I often find that the uh, tiny SAS lane capacitors uh, or PCI uh, lane coupling capacitors, like right over here, tend to get broken or damaged. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen to the Dell cards because I've seen that too. But in my experience, the LSI cards just seem to be more fragile. All right, fourth, 
The Dell H310 has a much larger aluminum heatsink than the LSI one. It is pretty much bigger in every dimension, including thickness, which you might not be able to see through the camera. I don't know how much of a difference it actually makes, but at least theoretically, the H310 should have the advantage of better cooling. Now, not only does the H310 have a larger heatsink, but it's clamped on by this uh, spring clip here. So it's actually really easy to remove. So if you're someone who likes to ensure you have the optimal cooling by repasting your thermal paste every few years, then this is the card for you. The LSI card has the heatsink epoxied to the chip, so it's not really easily removable. And I don't recommend that you try because I've done it before and the results just were not pretty. You can use a screwdriver or something like that to pop that heat sink loose, but I think I ended up damaging the solder joints on the BGA chip because after that, it just would not work without applying pressure uh, to clamp down on that chip. So yeah, guys, I don't think, you know, I wouldn't try it, just don't do it. All right, lastly, the sixth thing that you need to know is that I find the LSI controllers have a fragile SMD fuse. If you look closely on the PCI connector, right over here, there's a fuse labeled F1. Hopefully you can see that. All right, this fuse has a tendency to fail. And although it's not a very high failure rate, at least in my experience with my customers, I've only seen it happen a few dozen times after having sold over 30,000 controllers. But this is something that still has become noticeable over the years. So I wanted to mention that. In fact, many of the B stock cards I've repaired and sold uh, were ones where I had to basically replace that F1 fuse. In contrast, I've never ever seen that failure on a Dell H310. So guys, those are the six things you need to know when choosing between the LSI 9211-8i or 9201-8i versus the Dell H310. I know there's no clear winner here as each one has their strengths and weaknesses, but I hope this information will help you make the best choice based on your own preferences and how much weight you give to each of these factors. All right, guys, uh, that's it for this video. If you found this video useful, be sure to give it a like. And if you're into building servers, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video. Also, if you'd like to support my channel, check out my eBay store where I have the largest selection of LSI IT Mode HBA SAS controllers already flashed and ready for your server. Link in the video description below. Thanks for watching and have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.